Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Lawrence Plays with Power Tools. So in the last episode, um, I built up the shelves in this cupboard here. Now for the next one, I'm going to be heading up into the loft to do some tasks up there. So let's bring this down. And head on up. So as you can probably see, we've not really done much with the loft while we've been here. We've used it for a bit of a bit of storage. We've got we've got some spare carpet and chairs and things up here, but a lot of it is just junk that was here when we moved in, like this massive water tank here, which is so big that I don't think it'll fit down through the uh, through the hatch out of the out of the loft. There's also various. I don't know, it looks like some sort of notice board. There's a bed frame and a bench of some sort down there or somewhere in the darkness. And generally just a lot of junk that was here when we moved in. So we got rid of a lot of it when, um, well, shortly after we came in, took several car loads to the tip. But some of it was just hard to get at. Some of it we just didn't really bother with. So I think now it's about time I did something about it. So the first thing I'm going to do in today's video is chop up this this water tank here that's been there and just in, generally in the way for the whole time. And so, um, yeah, so I think if I, if I chop it up into sort of about six or eight pieces, they'll easily go down through the, through the hatch and we can take them to the tip. Of course, we're in the middle of the quarantine thing at the moment for uh, COVID-19, so we're not actually going to be taking it to the tip straight away. But my first, the first part of the plan is to chop that up anyway and get it out of the way. And then I can start laying down some more of, um, boards on, on, the, uh, on the loft floor to try and give, give us a bit more storage space up here. And I want, to, I want to really go straight down the middle of here because that's where most of the space is and it, it doesn't involve sort of bashing your head on all of the rafters. So I'm going to, so, uh, um, so yeah, the first step of that is to get rid of the, uh, the water tank and probably this large chunk of wood underneath it that's just gone a bit soggy and grotty and practi practically rotten. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, a few bits at a time. I don't know what this stuff in here. I've got a map of the world apparently. Uh, various other junk tucked in the stuffed in the bottom of there. So maybe maybe I'll bring up some bin liners as well to shove the the loose stuff into. Okay, let's get started. Right, so let's make a start and we'll get rid of some of this junk that's in the, uh, in the tank. Oh, so much dust. Right, what's next? <clears throat> these appear to be bags of insulation. Now I think I'm going to hang on to these because having some a decent amount of insulation up here is probably a good thing for our heating bills. And I can put them in this gap down here where there's a bit of sort of, where it's a bit patchy. And I was wondering if I should be thinking about looking at the insulation here and trying to redo it a bit. But I'm not sure I really want to play around with fiberglass insulation, it's just generally horrible stuff. But if there's some of it that's just neatly in plastic bags like this, that I can just chuck down in the hole and then straighten up in a minute, that's going to help quite a bit. And then there's some more empty plastic bags here, get rid of those. Okay, and there we go. Nice and empty and ready for some destruction. Now, during the last episode, it occurred to me that having a bit of safety equipment when I'm using power tools might be a good idea, especially if I'm chopping through something like this where I'm not 100% sure what's in it. And it's, it looks like it's basically just a large uh, plastic tub, but it does have a few, um, a few of these pipe end bits coming out of it. So yeah, a little bit of safety this time, I think. And then out with the old favorite. Let's see how this works. Not 
too bad, although the whole thing is trying to get away from me as I do this. I don't know, I think I need a third hand or to have it wedged against something, a bit better against something. Let's try this. That's gone pretty well. Let's continue straight through it. Attempt to just cut it in half to start with. Pretty good. There's a lot of, I don't know, I just want to call it crap, for want of a better word. It's full of dusty powdery stuff that I imagine is, it looks like plaster dust. Where that would have come from, I'm not entirely sure, but I think I need to try and get rid of that before I just cut it in half. Uh, otherwise it's going to go absolutely everywhere. Don't know if I can just tip it straight into the bag. Maybe I can actually, let's give that a shot. This may go spectacularly wrong. Of course, there isn't really room to maneuver it around in here because there's roofs in the way. Let's try that. I might need to go and get a shovel and dig it out. I don't know, this is working. And there's some what looks like old electrical tape as well. That can just, yeah, we'll go in the bag of crap. She's now kind of full. Which is unfortunate, given, as I mentioned earlier, I can't really go to the tip at the moment. <laughs> okay, let's finish off cutting it in half first. And then we'll go from there and probably cut it into each of those halves into another three pieces. Nearly through. <laughs> Ta-da! Already that's a lot more manageable. That's probably small enough to fit down through the hole. But I think... <clears throat> I think in the interest of keeping things a little bit tidier, I might chop that in half again. However, there's now a load more, there's still a load of the um, plaster dust in there, which I want to get rid of, just because I don't want to accidentally tip that in a massive, tip that straight down into the, onto the landing carpet. At least this is now a bit more manageable. So, there we go. So far, so good. Let's halve it again. Okay, yeah, that'll easily fit down through the hatch. But as I said earlier, <laughs> there's no point in trying to get rid of it at the moment because there's nowhere to take it. Because everywhere is closed. Let's get rid of this ball cock as well. Just gonna... Or I'll just get caught on things. Okay, that's much more compact. Between down there in that corner next to the carpet, 
So that's going to have to stay there for a while now because we can't really take it away because there's nowhere to take it because the tips are closed. But at least now that that's out of the way, I've got all the space over here now that's been freed up by this and I can now attempt to put down flooring basically all the way from here as far along there as I get before basically before I run out. Now as you can see someone's tried to do it a bit before with this chipboard that's quite obviously not been strong enough when they walked on it so we'll um, hopefully the stuff I've got will be better that will be slightly higher quality than that I guess we'll find out. Quite a bit of it hit down here again under the carpet and, and I'm pretty sure it, it, this is actually what it's designed for so fingers crossed it'll actually be good enough for the job and the struts are frequent enough that I'm hoping there'll be a decent amount of um, support given to it and then I can get rid of some of this other junks up here as well. Okay so the next thing to do is going to be to decide what to do with the base support for the for the water tank. So as you can see we've got these two um, beams running along here on top of the normal beams and then this massive sheet of uh, whatever sort of board that is, it looks like chipboard from here, um, on top of them that's got soaked presumably from a little bits of dribble from the tank. So I think I probably want to just get rid of that board because it's a bit crap but the challenge will be trying to work out how to get rid of it. I can't tell from here how it's attached, how it's fixed down. So let's have a look at that and see what we can do. <laughs> okay. Oh I see the whole thing is screwed together as one piece with these with these supporting beams but not actually attached down onto the house. That's interesting. The um, chipboard as well is also very, I mean, you listen to, listen to this. You can hear that sort of giving way as I pull on it. So that's not, <laughs> clearly not very strong at all. I could probably just rip this off with my hands, to be honest. I'm just trying to decide if that's the best thing to do. I think it might be. And then I can just, I can chuck that away with the rest of it and then decide whether these underneath pieces are strong enough and generally in good enough condition to be worth keeping. There's a lot more of this. There's a lot of this um, chipboard stuff, and this looks fairly similar to the stuff I was using for the shelves downstairs. So I guess there's a, um, a lesson in there. The stuff I'm using for the shelves isn't strong enough to stand on. But then I think I already knew that because the um, I don't think I trust the the way I've attached it to the walls to support my weight. But it's okay for a pile of food. I feel I should get a dustpan and brush and sweep up some of this stuff before I start pulling on things otherwise I'm just going to make a horrific mess so yeah I shall do that okay I don't know if you can tell by looking at me but it's getting pretty warm up here we're having this ridiculously good weather at the moment because we've got the sun uh, no the wind even coming out of the south uh, so it's perhaps not the best time to be up in the loft doing stuff and it's about 11 o'clock in the morning I think as well so it's getting kind of toasty up here. I think once I've finished dealing with this piece of wood, I might have to call it a day. Come back up tomorrow. Still, it's good to get started on it. <laughs> As I said earlier, this entire thing is just resting on the, on the beams. So I can take that out as one chunk, or rather, <clears throat> I don't need to worry about detaching it from the house. I can just pull it apart and be Ugh, deal with it separately. So now I mean I could I could run the saw down the length of this and cut the two two pieces apart and separate them that way. But given how easily this is coming apart, I feel it might be easier just to do this and shred it by hand. <laughs> let's break this like that there we go it's like a giant Weetabix or I don't know some sort of breakfast cereal let's see we go there's a nail sticking out here that's where the um that's what's holding it together just not very well well I say not very well if for what it was needed for downwards compression it's probably quite good but because I'm pulling it upwards and because it's in poor condition it's coming apart relatively easily like that Oh, this end is in much better condition. <laughs> I think it's only only this end that's got the water damage, so pulling this end apart is quite a lot harder. It feels like a series of deadlifts, just pulling maybe not that chunk chunk out at a time. Nearly there. That's all that main chipboard crap gone now. That's just 
one left, one piece of furniture board at the end there. Okay, good. Right, that's the destruction completed now. I think that's gone pretty well. That was hard work though. So I think I'm gonna take a break, get a drink, cool down a little bit. And I'll come back up and do some tidying up. piece seems reasonably sound apart from where I damaged the corner of it. Maybe I'll keep that. A couple of nails to bang out of it though. This stuff is all complete junk though. That seems okay as well. Okay there are a few bits, a few bits of wood up here that aren't in absolutely terrible condition <laughs> and I'll be able to keep and do goodness knows what with. The main area I'm thinking of boarding is sort of essentially from here across that way going down as basically as far as I can until I run out of run out of space or will to live um, or out of floorboards of course. Um, there's been a bit of a half-hearted effort over here in getting um, in boarding it up a bit with some random little pieces of wood that have just been screwed down onto the uh, onto the rafters. And so we, and that's what we've been using to put chairs on and stuff like that. And it, it, it basically works, but it's, it's a bit limited and it's a bit sort of doesn't show much forward thinking because it's taking up, it goes over the edges of the rafters and means I'm, not, I'm going to struggle to fit in additional pieces. But I may end up just leaving it there because it's, it does work for now. There's quite a lot of these insulation bags and that's quite probably a good thing because it mean, it's a nice easy way of just getting a bit of insulation in some of the spaces that are lacking without having to faff around with this horrible fiberglass stuff. Last time I was up, or one of the first times I was up here, I made the mistake of touching some of it and I itched for about three weeks after, no, about a week afterwards, horrible stuff. I don't really want to have anything to do with it if I can possibly avoid it. So have, yeah, having it in these nice plastic bags. Yeah, I think there's so much dust and stuff in this one. I'm gonna call this done and tie it up and attempt to get it down. Get rid of it. There we go. One neat, no, one neat bag of rubbish. A slight problem I'm going to run into. The carpet is all on top of the uh, the boards I'm going to be putting down in order to create extra floor space, which means I have to find somewhere to put that. Um, there's there's a little bit of space around, so I could probably find somewhere to put it, maybe down here, um, where the rubbish bag is at the moment, because that's going to go. So it's, it's not it's not impossible or I could chuck all the all the uh, carpet back down through that down the hatch and um, and bring it back up again later That might be easier to be honest to give me a bit more space up here to work with and then I can pull those those boards out and, um, and Lay them across here But I think that's going to be a job for another day when it's not quite as hot up here So whether that's I think the forecast says tomorrow is going to be a bit cooler and maybe and there'll be some evenings as well and things like that I'm going to, granted, it's going, it's going to require drilling and um, and, and screw, screwing with the with the drill, so it's not going to be a quiet thing. So I don't really want to do it late at night, but I could probably get away with doing it at like seven, eight o'clock ish, something like that. That's not too unreasonable. And I shall save the next step for the next episode. Oof. It's pulling things apart like that is surprisingly hard work. And yeah, then we should call it there. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.